Oh my goodness, we've got a real treat for you today because we have the lovely Mark Sussel here, who is a pillar of Unleashed. Oh my goodness, what a star. What an amazing actor. You know, everyone's looking up to him because look, do you remember Black Comedy when he played the major? My goodness, he was so good in that. And then Millennium Mysteries two summers ago, uh, Olive and Joe. My goodness, what a double act he was with the lovely Tracy. Um, but Mark's been pretty much in everything, going far as back as um, a man four seasons. And uh, uh, it's really good to have Mark here because he's actually going to, uh, rather than give us a load of double entendres and stuff about, you know, trimming your bush and all of that, he's going to actually be telling us a little bit about his story, which is really fantastic because if there was ever um, an inspirational story of rehab, then Mark Tuchel is that person. So Mark, it's lovely to have you this morning here with us. Thanks very much, Martin. I'm looking forward to this. It's, uh, yeah, it's been quite a journey in the last four and a half years. I'm, um, things have progressed sort of more than ever. My wildest, I could never think I would be in the situation I am now, four and a half well, years ago. This is yeah. it. And the great, thing, the great thing is, Mark, is obviously, you know, you are now one of the team on a Thursday morning at um, Unleashed Community Drama, uh, you know, because... Because you know you you've taken uh, stepped up the plate and taken up a bit of responsibility, which is fab as one of our mentors and leaders, um, and people really do look up to you because your story is quite uh, quite amazing. I mean, I when I met you, I'm just trying to work it out. Was it four years ago? I can't remember. It's a long time ago. You were uh, in yeah. a bit of a state, weren't you, mate? To be fair. Well, to say yeah, that, um, that's probably the polite way of putting it. Let's just say I wasn't at my best. <laughs> uh, but that was just prior to actually going into rehab. So, um, yeah, I, I think I've progressed a little bit since then. So uh, this is what this is all about, the progression from that to what you see speaking to the guy you see speaking to you today. Oh, yeah. Is that your agent? No problem. <laughs> Probably, yeah. Uh, send more money. Hello? Hello? Send yeah. more money. Yeah, I'll only do it if Judy Gent is in it. <laughs> <laughs> Good man. So listen, so tell me, so when you did, when you first uh, pitched up at Unleashed, uh, Mark, you had literally just gone into Jattis, hadn't you? I think I'd, I'd, I was just prior to Jattis. I think I was going to Walnut Lodge at the time. And um, then I went into Jattis. I think I'd been coming to Unleashed probably about three months because we were rehearsing for the first Under One Roof um, show. So. Um, yeah, I think I was at Walnut Lodge with the, you know, trying to help me with the drink problem. But, you know, I needed something a lot more industrial, should we say, than that. So uh, rehab was uh, came in in the February then. Yeah, because so, yeah, I mean, you'd been, you'd, been, you'd been struggling with drink for years, but it sort of came to a head yeah. when you moved down here to Torbay, didn't it? Yeah, um, I mean, basically, I've been drinking for 45 years and it was... Looking back, it was just a progressive downward trend. And it came to the point where I just couldn't go on the way I was going on. I couldn't go on living the way I was living, but I didn't know any other way. And it's at that point, rehab. Uh, I was given a place in rehab with Jattis. So yeah, that was, uh, that was basically it. Yeah. And so what's, I mean, what difference did that make? Because I mean, you were living on your own. I mean, you weren't very happy. Um, and I think, didn't you get chucked out of your, you were about to be made ev evicted, weren't you, from your flat before you went into Jattis? But what difference did yeah. Jattis make? Uh, well, what I'm going to do, Martin, I'll go into that in detail when I, when I actually do my share. There's, there's quite a lot to that. And I'll go into the key points of where I, I felt I was progressing and making progress and the effect those changes had on me. Mate, do you want to do that now for us? Do you want to you know, just share totally off the record what, you know, what it was like for you? Because people do look to you and um, you know, a lot of people are struggling and they're much further back, probably much, much the same as when you started coming to One Leash. Yeah, I'd love to, yeah. We can start it off and I'll... Uh, yeah, let's I'll do it. Let's do it. You know. Right then. For anybody that doesn't know me out there, my name's Mark. I'm part of the Unleashed team, and I'm a recovering alcoholic of four and a half years standing, having been an active alcoholic for the previous 45 years. Um, I first started drinking when I was about 15, um, and basically I took to it like a duck to water. 
Um, I had what would conceivably sort of think as a bit of a draconian upbringing, you know, children should be seen and not heard. And um, the whole aspect of that gave me a pretty negative uh, Im influence of myself and perception of myself. Um, so life was all that bit harder. Anyway, when I was 15, uh, my dad did what most dads did in them days. He took me to the pub. He was putting his coat on one Friday night and he looked at me. He said, come on, V, we're going to the pub. Because they talk like that up north, you know. So he took me down the pub and um, he put this pint of something called bitter in my hand and said, drink that and keep the gob shut. Loosely translated, drink that and don't say anything. <laughs> but I took that first pint, I had a drink of that first pint, and I got this lovely warm glow, and it was a bit like the Starburst advert, the sweets, you know, poof, brilliant, nice warm glow in my stomach. And I thought, wow, I'll have a bit of this. I just took to it like a duck to water. After two pints, the world was becoming a much better place. Um, after four pints, I was chatting up the barmaids. It was really great. I thought, oh, I'll have a bit of it. But the one thing I didn't know, and this is probably the key thing, because when I had that first drink, it, um, it activated the mental illness that is alcoholism. And I've heard many definitions of alcoholism in my time, but the best one I can come up with, or the one that works for me, is that it is actually a mental illness with a spiritual resolution, and it's progressive. So even for periods in the past when I stopped drinking for a while, when I started drinking again, it was pretty much as if I'd never stopped. It was just basically a continuum, a continuum carrying on. And throughout that 45 years of drinking, um, I, I developed a mental, an increasing mental obsession with drink. And that was also with the physical side. I got the physical craving for drink. So the craving promoted the obsession, the obsession promoted the craving. And basically, I was just on a downward spiral for 45 years. That was pretty much when um, rehab, I was in, given a place in rehab, Jatis in Torquay. Um, at that point in time, um, mentally, I was all over the place. Physically, I was a bit half and half. I was about four stone lighter than I am now. But the key thing was spiritually, I was absolutely dead, totally dead spiritually. Because with the alcohol taking precedence in my life, even only in my thoughts, not particularly when I was drinking, uh, spirituality just didn't come into it. Or whatever spirituality I had as a child just seemed to go. Because drink was taking the, um, taking the preference. Um, when I got a place in Jatis, my instant um, thought was relief. Because as I say, I, could, I knew I couldn't carry on living the way I was living. But I didn't know any other way. Um, so I went into Jatis um, and I sort of felt some gratitude for the simple reason that I thought to myself, and it was only a logical thought, it was probably the first positive thought I'd had for many, many years, is that if somebody thinks I'm worth helping, then I must, by definition, have some worth. I didn't know what it was. I didn't actually believe it. It was just a logical assumption. So I went into Jatis. Um, and basically speaking, um, one of the first things they told me, they said, well, while well, you're looking towards the sunshine, the shadows are all behind you. So I thought, right, well, fair enough. So at that point in time, I drew a line in the sand and ev everything in my life prior to Jatis, I just let go of. I thought I'm going to focus on moving forward here because literally speaking, I knew in my heart it was basically the last chance saloon. You know, this is it for me. If this doesn't work, I mean... I'm in real, I'm in a lot more trouble than I would, I would ever have thought I could be in. Um, and the good thing was that the key workers were also recovering addicts. So I had confidence in them, I trusted them, and I knew um, what they were talking about. And they knew what I was talking about. Um, so I'm in Jatis. It's a change because I'm interacting with people uh, in a shared house rather than living on my own. So therefore, I had to start in, uh, integrating with people, communicating more. Um, initially, the conversations were pretty trite, you know, nice well, weather for the time of year sort of thing. But as my confidence increased, I was able to start talking about my thoughts, which categorised me. They say something about me. They categorise me. So I'm telling another human being something about me. 
But the actual key, the key thing in, first key thing in all this was when I found the ability and the self-confidence to actually talk about my feelings because I had to have sort of got enough self-confidence to think that somebody may even be interested in how I feel. But then the ability and the confidence to express my feelings totally and honestly. And when I did that, I found other people reciprocated. They talked to me about their feelings openly and honestly. And for the first time for as long as I can remember, I was starting to make connections with people, which started to take away those feelings of abject isolation and loneliness that I'd experienced. And possibly a lot of people listening to this may have experienced. So that was really the first sort of key step in moving forward, this ability to talk about my feelings with confidence. Um, at that time, when I went into JATIS, I was introduced to AA, which uh, initially was a bit of an eye-opener. I mean, the first meeting I went to, there were some seriously interesting characters there. Um, I must admit, when I looked around, I thought it was a family reunion for the Adams family. You know, there was, I'd say, some seriously interesting people there. But they were all happy, they were all friendly, they all shook my hand, they made me welcome. And then when they started talking about their experiences with drink and how it affected them, I thought to myself, why am I telling my story here? So I didn't feel like an alien on the planet anymore. I didn't feel as if it was just me and I've just come off the planet. So other people had thought, had thought and felt the way I felt. Um, so on, when I went into um, AA, um, I very quickly took up service there. I started doing the tea and biscuits at one of the meetings because I thought I, I want to be actually in AA, not just at AA. Um, and of course, the, we introduced the 12 step program, uh, came into the um, into proceedings. Uh, coupled with that, I was at the theatre group, as you said before, Martin, um, and we were doing rehearsals there. So, really, at that point, um, I was interacting on three fronts um, it was AA, theatre group, and JATIS. So, things were progressing quite nicely. Um, I started thinking about my higher power um, in, the, in the recovery program. There is this thought about looking outward, and that's very important because when it was suggested I look for a power greater than myself, it obliged me to look outwards rather than inwards. And for many years, I've been looking totally inwards at um, a very small and imploding world I had, which revolved around me and whatever bottle of spirit was sat in front of me in a not very nice abode. So the ability to look outward sort of came into the equation. And in terms of higher power, um, initially when I was in TA, I did go to, I was taken to church as a child, but in the initial stages, I used the groups of AA as my higher power on the logical assumption that if the 20 alcoholics at the meeting are more powerful than one individual alcoholic. Uh, and that lasted for quite a, lasted for a good year. Um, but as I say, looking outward was one of the key issues there. And then I, um, I was still in the theatre group. We were progressing on moving towards doing something else. I think it was the black comedy. Um, I'd be with the theatre group. I was still going to AA. And in terms of JATIS, I'd done the 16 week program and they moved me into a follow on house um, where you're into, again interacting with people, but you're not on the pre finished the program. It's just getting used to living a different way. And then you moved on to, to help you to move on to find accommodation and live on your own. Um, at that point in time, one night, one morning, I was at the theatre group and one of the lads there, I think it was Blair when he was about, uh, I know he went to Mary Mags. It was a throwaway remark. He said to me, see you at church on Sunday, Mark. And I just went, aye, all right. It wasn't, an, it wasn't an arrangement. As I say, it was just a throwaway remark. And um, I got home and I sat down and I thought, I think I must have had a black adder ball drink more. I thought, that sounds like a funny plan. So the next Sunday, I, um, I went to church and it was quite a, a pleasant surprise. Everything was upbeat and happy. The hymns were upbeat. It was a family service. All the kids were dancing around to the hymns. The sermon was upbeat. And it was totally different than the last experience I'd had with um, church about 30 years before when the, uh, 
when the priest in question was banging his fist on the pulpit, telling us all we'd rotten, burning hell for eternity. And to be honest, after, after an hour of that, you needed a couple of pints to sort yourself out. But, uh, I went to, um, I started going to Mary Mags, got my, you know, established there. And subsequent to that, when Samuel, the, the, um, the present vicar, came, I was given the privilege and the pleasure of doing a reading at his uh, inauguration. Yeah, I remember. Uh, that. And it's Fantastic. At that point, um, and at that point, um, my higher power became God in the form of the Trinity. I mean, in terms of AA, higher powers are a broad spectrum. Anybody that doesn't have the same view that I have about God can, uh, the higher power can be the God of their understanding. I know one member of the group has uh, their higher powers in the universe, and that works for them, and that's perfectly fine. Whatever higher power you choose, as long as it works, but it's a power greater than yourself, and you have actually made the decision to look outward beyond yourself to find that higher power. And I think that really is. Um, what the key thing is. So now I've got the church, AA, the theatre group, and um, I'm just about going to move on from rehab, which was um, they decide, yeah, okay, you're, uh, you're fit to look after yourself now, we'll help you find some accommodation, which is a pretty catacly cataclysmic moment, and that's not easy for me to say. So what they did is they helped me find, um, on social housing, helped me find a nice little semi-detached bungalow helped me with um, getting some furniture, paint, and this sort of thing. And lo and behold, I moved on from Jatis and um, living on my own in independently sort of thing. Uh, so what's the difference pretty much between this shell of a human being that went into um, Jatis four and a half years ago and the guy you see sat here today having a chat with you? Well, today, as I speak to you now, uh, I'm pretty much happy in my own skin. I've got peace of mind and I'm pretty content. And there's a couple of reasons for that. The first reason is that I'm sober. And the second reason, equally important, is because of that sobriety, I have now a manageable life, which I didn't have for a very, very long time. Um, and these changes have come about pretty much because of the changes that have happened within me in here, endogenous change rather than external change. Um, with finding my higher power and having a better relationship now than I've ever had um, and adopting the 12 step program, not just as a, a way of stopping drinking, but as a way of life. Um, in terms of each day, I hand my life and my will now over to my higher power. I ask him to guide me to do his will, not mine, take self, i.e. me, out of the equation. And then, after I've done that, I try and embrace each day on the principles of the serenity prayer, which is to accept the things I can't change, have the courage to change the things I can. And again, that's changes within me. It's not rechanging the curtains or painting the bathroom. It's changes within me. Again, and this is very, very important. Um, I've developed the ability to look outward. I don't, um, when I undertake something or go somewhere, I always ask myself, what can I put into this situation rather than what um, I can take out of it? People in the course of my recovery have been very kind to me and helped me and gone the extra mile. And you know, I make it part of my daily business now to try and give back what I was freely given, you know, to be there for other people, try and be a happy and positive influence in the life. Um, and, and as I say, looking outward is um, very, very important. In Mark, can I say that I can absolutely concur with that because you are such a positive person to have around. You know, I find you such a blessing. You know, I, I really count it a real blessing to know you. Uh, Mark and uh, to have you in uh, Unleashed and what you bring to it you are an inspiration to a lot of people because you do exactly that you're looking out seeing how you can bless others how you can put a well, smile on people's faces and mate you do that you do that in tenfold you know it's such yeah. a pleasure having you around I mean it's it's incredible what would you say Mark to perhaps someone who uh, is still really struggling with a drink but they 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 just can't 
you know, they just can't get past that first post. What would you say to them? Uh, it's very, very difficult um, because each person's mindset is their own mindset in terms of being shades on a theme. Um, I would say ask them to try and look outward rather than look inward. Just try and do that one thing initially because while they're looking outward, they're not focusing on themselves for the next drink or whatever else their addiction is. Um, that's the f first thing I would say to them. That is the one definite thing that I think is very, very important. Um, higher power, at some point, consider looking for a power greater than yourself. I also think that is very, very important. Um, in my case, as I say, um, God in the form of the Trinity is my higher power. Um, I'm aware that I'm a very, very small part of a very big plan. I mean, given the fact there are six billion people roughly on this planet at the moment, at this point in time, as I speak to you, Martin, I am one six billionth of a very big plan. And a lot of people lived a life before I was born, and there'll be a lot of people living a life after I'm dead and gone, which makes me an even smaller part of a greater plan. But also, I'm very important to my higher power because he knows me by name. So all the bit I'm a small part of his plan, he knows me by name. Nice. And I'm ne even though sometimes when I'm physically alone, I'm never alone, if you know what I'm trying to say there. Nice. It's, um, that's a very important part of my recovery. Uh, the other thing I do, recovery has given me simplicity. I always call it, in my own daft way, I always call it the meerkat approach, because Alexander the meerkat's always going, simple. But yeah, I keep things very, very simple. And I also keep it in the day, sort of one day at a time. Then I'm not sort of on bombarded and overwhelmed by life in general or people in particular. So um, that's pretty much the way I am at the moment and how I've sort of moved on from the shell of a person I was when I went into um, Jatis to the person you see talking today now. And I'll finish on this, but the good thing is that since I've been going to church, I'm led to believe that uh, heaven does have, in fact, very many, a lot of mansions, which I'm really, really pleased about because when I do actually find that when it is my time to sign in at the pearly gates, I really, and with the best will in the world, I don't really want to be in the same one as the ex mother in law. So I'll finish <laughs> on that, mate. Thank you. <laughs> Mate, well, can I say, Mark, listen, you, uh, uh, that is, you know, there's so many nuggets of real uh, value in what you just said there, you know, and, uh, you know, uh, the thing that I, I, I love about you, mate, is how you have developed as a performer and a writer. My goodness, over the lockdown, the, um, the drama group has really benefited from your amazing writing, you know, and I think what is good is that, you know, obviously, since you have been in recovery and since you sort of, particularly over this last couple of years, my goodness, I have seen you write such clever stuff you know you're such a gifted guy and now that the focus is no longer on your addiction you know you have developed as um, an amazing performer and as an amazing writer and uh, I, I have to say Mark I love having you around and I think you are such an asset to unleash and really appreciate you sharing what you've done this morning mate thank you so much. It means a lot to me Mark I'm grateful thank you. that's really I, I do appreciate that but as you say now the now the compulsion and sorts of the addiction and alcohol have gone it actually has freed my mind up to look outward and think yeah i can write a bit of this i can do a bit of that yeah it, it frees you it, it frees your mental process up as well and it's a wonderful thing i'm not even burdened by the thought of alcohol i've lost the compulsion the urge and even the desire to drink it it just does not exist in brain time with me anymore and i thank i thank god for that my high power for that every day that's really good. You know, what you get is what you see today. Totally. Yeah. yeah. Well, listen, we're going to be hearing a few, uh, but Mark, thank you so much. I really, really appreciate you joining us this morning. And, uh, you know, thank you so much, mate. Really, really appreciate you as a person. You're, you're Thanks just... for inviting me, Martin. I hope that uh, something I said may help a little bit here and there with somebody. Thanks a lot. Definitely.